My air fryer egg rolls are restaurant quality, but much better for you. I'm Justin from Cooking with Coit. I specialize in clean comfort cooking. And remember, if you love this video, make sure you hit those like and subscribe buttons. Let's get started. Let's first go over all the ingredients you need to make this recipe. Ground chicken, coleslaw mix, egg roll wrappers, green onions, ginger, garlic, sesame seed oil, soy sauce, and olive oil spray or just regular olive oil is fine too. And the one piece of special cooking equipment you need for this recipe is an air fryer. The first thing we need to do is to mince up two cloves of garlic. Next, we're gonna mince up two teaspoons of fresh ginger. You could also grate the ginger, which is really nice. By grating it, you're really gonna make it super emulsified and you can really get it into such small pieces, smaller than you could with a knife. But I think for this recipe, cutting it and mincing it is totally fine. One other thing I want to tell you, whenever I cut my ginger, I realize it's the perfect time to make ginger tea. So uh, all you have to do for that is just chop up some ginger, super rough like this, drop it into a pot of boiling water, and then let it boil for, I don't know, anywhere between like five and 10 minutes. And then you just strain out the chunks of the ginger and you get this really amazing ginger tea that is always delicious, makes your stomach feel good. So try that one too. All right, guys, the next thing we're gonna do is to chop up our green onion. I've got two green onions here and just chop it into like regular sized pieces. All right, guys, so now we're going to saute uh, our ingredients here. But first, I wanna tell you about this new, really cool gadget that I got. This is the Braville Control Freak, I believe is what it's called. It's basically an induction burner. This burner works really well with my hex clad pans because my hex clad pans uh, work on an induction top. So I'm very lucky that that worked out. If I burn anything in this video, Forgive me, this is literally the first time I'm using it, so let's see how it goes. Next thing we're gonna do is add a little bit of vegetable oil into our pan. Just one tablespoon's fine. And we're gonna first saute our ginger and garlic together. Now one really cool tip that I learned not too long ago, if you start with cool olive oil, so meaning that you're putting the olive oil on a pan that isn't too hot already, you are much less likely to burn your garlic. And now we're just gonna let this saute for just about a minute, minute and a half until it's fragrant. I kind of find it funny that this device is called the Control Freak because I feel like that sums me up very nicely. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do, guys, is add two cups of coleslaw mix. I'm just gonna do it by hand. It's like literally trying to measure this is absurd. So just try to measure two cups roughly. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to use everything that you cook. And if you see like a big piece like this, probably good to break it up. I think that should be good. That should be about two cups. And now we're just gonna let this saute in the garlic and ginger just for, I don't know, a couple minutes, three to four minutes until the uh, coleslaw mix has softened. One quick note about this coleslaw mix that I bought. I don't usually buy like vegetables already cut in plastic, but I do feel like this is one of those times when it might be okay because the effort that it takes to shred up cabbage like this and to also julienne these carrots this thin it's actually a lot of work if you're doing it totally from scratch. So in this one instance, it is okay, in my opinion, to buy a pre-mixed, already pre-cut uh, cabbage and carrots in a bag. If you're really short on time, you might have to. So let's just let this saute until it's all kind of softened and uh, cooked through just a little bit. All right, guys, so when the coleslaw has started to wilt, next thing you're gonna do is to add your protein of choice. I suggest you use ground chicken or ground pork, whichever one, like, you like, uh, ooh, let's not put that in there. Whichever one you like from a dietary perspective, each one is gonna work totally well. I will say, if you're going to be using ground poultry, so if you're gonna be using ground chicken or ground turkey, what I truly suggest, very highly suggest, is that you do not use white meat only. And the reason for that is, is that white meat has a very low fat content, therefore it's going to come out a little dry, and that's not as nice for this recipe. You can if you want, just saying, I highly suggest you use dark poultry, so dark ground chicken or dark ground turkey. Pork is also just like probably the best thing ever. It's got the most flavor and it's probably the most traditional in terms of an egg roll. So use pork if you love pork. So I'm just gonna break this up in the pan a little bit as it's browning. It's probably not gonna like truly brown like you would normally brown like taco meat or something because we've got so much uh, veggies in here already and that's creating a lot of water in the pan. So you're not gonna get a super browned meat here, but that's not the point, so don't worry about it. 
Just give this a nice toss and when it's probably, I don't know, a quarter of the way cooked, or even now, honestly, there's not really like, you don't have to wait if you don't want to. You can go ahead and add one tablespoon of the soy sauce. You guys might've noticed that I am using tamari here because this is a gluten-free house. So we just really have gluten-free soy sauce. So one tablespoon of tamari or soy sauce. And now I'm gonna add one tablespoon of sesame oil. This happens to be toasted sesame oil, which a friend told me a while back that toasted sesame oil typically is reserved for like drizzling on as a garnish at the very end of a dish and that regular untoasted sesame oil is better for cooking. I don't think that's true. I mean, I don't wanna call her a liar, the person that said that. If you guys have a strong opinion about that, I would love to know in the comments below. I think it's okay to use. So just as you'd be cooking uh, taco meat, let's just say, what you're gonna find is that the protein is going to stick together a little bit, get a little clumpy. Just take your spatula and just break it apart as best you can. Ideally, you want it into very small little kind of like round little balls. That's what we're looking for because that's what's really gonna help us wrap these egg rolls really tightly. All right guys, so after you have broken up the meat almost entirely into the small little chunks I was talking about before, just grab your green onions and we're going to just toss them in. We're gonna let these green onions uh, saute for, I don't know, another you know minute to three minutes and just until they're kind of slightly cooked through, just a little wilted. All right guys, so this chicken mixture is totally ready. I really wish you guys could smell it. It's like the soy sauce and the toasted sesame oil and the ginger and garlic all coming together. It smells so amazing. You guys are gonna love making this. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this off the heat and set it aside to cool. All right guys, so this is the most fun part of this cooking process. We're going to be rolling our egg rolls. So you first start by grabbing these egg roll wrappers. And so hopefully you guys can find these at your store. Get a, get a shot of this, Amon. First thing you're gonna do is to lay out one of these egg roll wrappers. I like to think about making it sort of a diamond as I'm looking at it. That's gonna be the right orientation of it. Then you take a spoonful of your mixture and this is gonna be totally to taste. So this is gonna be up to you guys how much you actually put in here. I'll show you how much I suggest. All right, that should be a good place to start. We'll see how this goes and then we can add more or less on the next ones that we do. So the first thing you wanna do is to position the mixture kind of like lower middle. So you're first gonna take the bottom corner and then wrap it over like this. And it does the, the bottom corner doesn't have to like fold under, that's okay. You can do it. If you want to, you can, but it doesn't have to. Then just slowly roll it. So next you're gonna bring in either the right or left side, doesn't matter which one. And then now I'm gonna bring in the opposite side. So I did the right first, now I'm doing the left. And then just continue the roll all the way. Now once you get to the end, you have two choices. So you could take some beaten egg and just put it in a little bowl just like this, or I have a, a little bowl of water, so I'm just gonna take a little water on my finger, rub it right on the end, this is gonna act like a little bit of glue, and just finish the roll all the way across. And you should be left with a nice little egg roll that looks just like this. Now I'm gonna do it uh, anywhere between five and 10 more times depending on the amount of mixture you have left. All right guys, so now that we have the egg rolls already rolled and prepped and ready for the air fryer, the thing you need to do next is to take a little bit of olive oil spray or you can use regular olive oil and just kind of rub it on here. I like the spray just because the spray gives it a nice even coat and it's pretty light. So you wanna roll them back over after you've sprayed one side just to spray the other side. And let's just spray this another light coat. And now these are ready for the air fryer. All right, so let's throw these into the air fryer basket. One really important thing to know is, is that you want to make sure that the seam side where we basically close these egg rolls, that that's facing down. So put it down like this. Just kind of give each one a little bit of space. Try to give them enough space so that the hot air of the air fryer moves all around the outside. That's definitely gonna help them get crispier. All right, so we are going to cook these air fryer egg rolls at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 minutes. However, I have burned these before. You do not wanna burn your egg rolls. So I am going to set the timer for 10 minutes, but I'm gonna check them at probably five minutes halfway through just to see how they're doing and probably recheck them again at eight minutes. All right, guys, so uh, we have two minutes left on the timer. That's eight minutes total. 
They look amazing, wow. So like I said, I went a little bit of a shorter cooking time than the full 10 minutes. I did eight minutes this time. You know, I'm a little afraid to cook them longer because here, I'll show you guys. Uh, the edges are already getting nice and crispy brown. So I'm gonna finish the cook time here. I'm gonna call it eight minutes at 400 degrees. Fahrenheit is perfect. And I cannot wait to give these a try because they look so delicious. But before I do, if you love this recipe and you wanna see more just like it, check out my air fryer recipes playlist. Okay, let's give these a try. I also added a little bit of my favorite dipping sauce for these. This is a sweet chili sauce, sweet and spicy. It's so good. So let's give these a taste. Woo, it's hot. Let them cool before you eat them. These air fryer egg rolls taste so incredible. You have the perfect amount of crunch and they are that super traditional egg roll flavor that you love from your favorite restaurant. I hope you guys give these a try. I'll see you in the next video.